Psalm 103.10 In this psalm, King David looks into the innermost parts of his being, that being his own soul, and challenges himself to find ways to bless the Lord because of all the blessings God has given. For Christians today, it is very important to understand how rich we are because God has saved us from our sins and has assured us an everlasting life in heaven. For today's message, I want all born-again believers to think about heaven and get excited for what is to come in eternity. Here are a few things of what we can hope to expect in heaven. 1. In heaven we will have an answer to separation. We all understand the pain of separation from those we love, and it certainly is not easy. In the book of Acts, Apostle Paul had to say goodbye to the elders from Ephesus, his friends, and people he invested a lot of time into. Acts 20.37 Nevertheless, Amidst the sadness of change, believers do not grieve like those who have no hope. Paul teaches us that there will be a future reunion for those who believe that Jesus died and rose again. 1 Thessalonians 4.13 But I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. 2. We will have an answer to suffering and an invitation to rest. It is clear to any mature person that our world is full of pain, hunger, poverty, disease, and ultimately, death. Jesus knows that each and every person alive today must pass through such a broken world. Jesus offers an invitation that is much welcome to any tired soul. Matthew 11.28 The time to accept Jesus' invitation is only available when we are living. Don't wait for this amazing gift until tomorrow. Enter into God's rest today. You see, in heaven, something wonderful is going to happen. God shall wipe away all tears from our eyes. You will never cry again. You will never be disappointed again. You will never experience heartbreak or betrayal. And God will personally wipe away your tears. Oh, how we all need that. There are people listening to me right now who need that so desperately. They are tired of crying themselves to sleep, but one day God will wipe all your tears away. And there shall be no death, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. Just imagine no more pain, no more sickness. Heaven will one day be our reality. Number three, you see in heaven we will have peace and harmony forever. In the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve both lived in peace and harmony with God and as well each other. But not only that, all nature was rejoicing and worshiped God. Even the animals lived peacefully together since there was no need to hunt one another. Genesis 1, 30 And to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life I have given every green herb for meat and it was so. But sadly All this came to an end when Adam and Eve sinned and disturbed the natural order of things. 
Today we see that in all human relationships and our relationship with creation. We are in constant fights and there is never ending conflict. Yet God assures us that one day in Isaiah 11, 6, the wolf also shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the kid and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them. On that blessed day, people of every tribe, nation, and language will join together to worship God. Revelation 7-9 Fourthly, there will be a new genesis, a new beginning. As Christians, we already know the end of the story. We are winners and we will all make it to heaven after we die and will live forever with God. The Lord on that blessed day will create a new heaven and a new earth as he makes a new beginning, a new Genesis. Revelations 21, 1. In the new world, God will welcome his people to live with him without fear and sin. We should all desire to live in heaven where there no longer will be any curse, where we'll live forever by God's light. And there shall be no more curses, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Revelation 22, 3 The fifth thing, there will be some incredible, incomparable, and eternal worshiping of God. Psalm 27, 4 One thing I have desired of the Lord, that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. King David expressed this desire to dwell with God. There's nothing more beautiful than for children of God to be in the presence of God. In heaven, we will never get tired of praising our amazing Lord because we will never come to an end of discovering his unlimited goodness and the wonders of the works of his hands. Every moment in heaven will bring a breathtaking view of his beauty and his love. Seven, there will be treasures and rewards in heaven. It is safe to say that at one point or another, all of us have experienced theft or property loss due to unforeseeable circumstances. For example, it might have been our vehicles were either stolen or crashed, homes are flooded, our personal belongings stolen. Such a dangerous world makes Jesus' statement not to put our trust in earthly treasures very meaningful. Earthly wealth is temporary. Nothing lasts forever. We must focus on acquiring spiritual treasures instead. John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give on to them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them to me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand.